So again, welcome to Cutting the Cord uh, at the Groton Public Library. My name is Emily Sheehan and I am a technology librarian and I'm very, very excited that you decide to sign up for this class um, because this class is constantly changing. I have taught this for a number of years and I'm probably when I myself cut the cord uh, at my house and it has just changed so drastically over the years. It, it's quite fascinating. So. I'm hoping that a lot of what's in this presentation, I usually really good. I just went over this about a few weeks ago. Things might have been updated since then. So if there are any changes that I recognize as we're going through the presentation, I will go ahead and make a note and I will update it before I send it to you. With that said, this is being recorded. So I will go ahead and send a recording to all of the registered participants at the end of this presentation. You will get a, a copy of the recording. Um, you will also get a copy of the presentation. Um, and of course, you'll, you'll have my email there. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, who am I? Um, well, today you can see me. Um, actually, I might turn off my video just to save the Wi-Fi for anybody that's out there. Okay, so um, I have been at the Groton Public Library for a number of years now. My primary responsibility is to teach technology classes, um, and I have inherited some other responsibilities along the way, including children's services. So if you ever have any technology questions, um, you can feel free to reach out to me at my email. And again, you will get a copy of the slideshow presentation and these are clickable, which is really nice. All the links are clickable. I also recommend that if you're interested and you feel comfortable with following us on social media, such as Facebook, I don't have our Instagram link on here, but that is attached to my email. Um, so when I send this out to you, you'll see the link. Um, if you follow us on social media, that's where all of our updates go um, regarding any services that we, we might be delaying or services that we are currently offering. Like I said, the library is open now, so we're very excited to come on in and say hi. So you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You can also sign up for our newsletter, which changes monthly. Let's go ahead and get to the next slide. So this is pretty much what you can expect to learn today. What is cutting the cord? Because it's kind of a strange saying. Um, how to select an internet plan that would be appropriate for your usage at home. Uh, what sorts of devices you should have. And also we're going to, of course, take a look at some of the streaming services because that's the best part. Now, we only have an hour. So for the most part, I'm going to just introduce you to the streaming services. I hope to at least show you Netflix at the very least. but. If you have specifics that you're curious about, simply put them in the Q&A uh, box or even in the chat, and I will try my best to get to them. So what is cutting the cord? It's simply the process of moving away from a cable service and replacing it with simply just streaming subscriptions. And what that means is you might currently be um, subscribing to a cable plan through your internet service provider or other provider. Most of the time, our plans come bundled, and what that means is that you get cable, you get telephone, and you get uh, internet all in one for one price, and that is a monthly fee. Well, as time has gone on, we have noticed more and more that we're seeing a lot of cable channels that we just don't use, and the ones that we do use sometimes just go away, right, because it depends on the contracts. So a lot of people have moved, and, oh, and plus there are commercials on cable television, or they're not so obnoxious. So when we move to typically streaming services, such as Netflix and Hulu, you might get away from um, paying more for services that you don't necessarily use. It's more of an a la carte option. Now there are several streaming services out there, but really the beauty of this is you're getting rid of your cable bill and you're going simply to your internet bill. Um, you still need an internet service plan. And then you're paying for these subscription services, which are a fraction of the cost of cable. And we're going to break down those costs as we go on. So what are the pros and cons? Now, I always like to bring this up right at the beginning because sometimes cutting the cord is not cost effective for some people, and sometimes it is. 
Let's go ahead and start with the cons and then we'll move on over to the pros. So we'll end on a, on a good note. The cons are there's usually less content, but as I mentioned earlier, and typically in a real class, we would have everybody raise their hands at this point. Um, like how many of you use 90% of the channels that you pay for? Nobody raises their hand typically. We're usually watching about, I don't know, anywhere from two to 5% of the channels. And that's even, that that's a lot, I think. Um, so when you move to streaming services, there's usually less content because you're really only paying for what you want. Most, you must purchase at least one streaming device. And what this means is if you do not have a smart TV, you will need a different device to use to make your television smart. If you have a smart TV, you've already made that streaming device purchase. You might also miss out on some exclusive content. So usually with your cable plan, um, you will have, you'll have live TV. Some of the services that we're going to look at today, you won't have live TV. If you decide to have live, live TV, you might not have access to premium channels. That might be an additional cost. So we will look at that. And like I said at the beginning, it could possibly end up costing more. And I have run into people where this is true. I don't know if I'm saving any money by cutting the cord um, just because I subscribe to a lot of things, but hey, it helps me keep you informed, right? So the pros, typically it's cheaper. For the average user, when you cut your cable, um, that is a huge chunk of your, um, your plan with your internet service provider, cable provider. Um, it can range anywhere from about $60 to, in some cases, $200 per month just for the cable portion. Um, plus, you have an added cable box um, rental fees, and it, the list just goes on and on, depending on, on who you have for an internet or a cable provider. So typically, it's cheaper. You're paying for only what you want to watch. So for instance, growing up, I did not grow up with television. So I grew up watching movies and I never watched TV shows because back then we had VHSs and I don't know if TV shows were on VHS at that point, or if they were, they were few and far between. So I will, uh, grew up mostly watching movies. So when I decided to cut the cord, I was like, oh, I don't need cable anyways. I'm not accustomed to it. I just need something that provides me with some basic movies and maybe some basic uh, TV shows, not live television. So like I said, we will look at that. Usually there are no commercials. However, I'm finding that as time goes on, there are more and more commercials, um, not only on live TV options, but also on services like Hulu. Uh, Netflix, um, Disney Plus, those are, those are a couple of the services that don't have commercials and you get very, very spoiled. Lastly, and this is probably the most important to me, is that everything is on demand. And what that means is you don't have to leave Sunday dinner at approximately 5.30 to catch whatever's on TV at six. So, and this is extremely important to me. Um, so whatever I'm interested in, I can set to record if I'm watching live television, or I can, it's something that is just always there and I can just stream it straight from Netflix or Hulu or HBO or Disney, whatever I'm using at the time. So I'm throwing a lot at you. Again, if there's any questions, feel free to go ahead and plug that into the Q&A box um, at the bottom of your screen. So what precisely do you need? You will need internet. So even though you're cutting your cable, you still need your internet plan. You will also need a streaming device, like I mentioned. If you have a smart TV, you already have that, that streaming device. You will need a streaming subscription. So if you cut the cable and you have a smart TV and you turn on the television and still there's nothing there for you, it's because you haven't subscribed to a service and we're going to price those out. And then lastly, of course, a device to watch on. Now, this is a picture of a television, or I guess it could be a computer screen, but this is mostly to tell you that you can watch on any device that has access to the internet that has a screen, right? So this could be your cell phone, this can be your tablet, this can be your laptop or your desktop computer, it can be a television, pretty much anything that connects to the internet and has a screen allows you to watch on it, which is really nice. So this is probably the most important question um, when people come to me about cutting the cord. Um, and it's selecting an internet plan. Now, I will be very honest with you. I don't work for the cable or internet companies. Um, my experience has come mostly from 
personal experience and what I have kind of gone through over the years. Um, now, internet plans are tough because they're changing constantly. So we're going to talk about some of the things that you should look for when deciding to choose an internet service plan or even a provider and um, what price points are available to you on average. So when you are looking to stream, and this is very, very basic here, this slide, um, it was taken from highspeedinternet.com and it's how much internet speed do I need for what I am doing on my computer? Because you want to make sure, here we're trying to cut costs, you want to make sure that you are not paying for more internet than you use. And that happens a lot. That happens with our cell phone plans. It happens with our internet services. It happens with our cable, right? We pay a lot for channels we don't watch. So with these basic um, functions, such as email, browsing, social media, you need about 0.5 to um, 5 megabits per second. Um, and that's download speeds. And this might sound very, very foreign to you, and that's OK. For the most part, even the basic plans that you get from any of the top cable companies in the area like um, Xfinity or Atlantic Broadband or Frontier, their base plans start at about 100 megabits per second for download speeds. So it's you're going to be fine. And this is just telling you the minimum of what is required. Streaming music, you need about two streaming SD video, so that's standard definition video. Now, this is one stream at a time. So that's if there's one person in the house, nobody else is doing anything on the internet, they can stream a standard definition video with three megabits per second download speeds. When you move to HD or 4K, you'll notice that those download speeds bump up quite well, significantly for 4K, not so much for HD. But like I mentioned, your base plans are going to be so much more. So based on your family size, about how much will you need? This is not only based on your family, it's also based on the devices that are in your house. Now, our homes are becoming more and more smart, or at least some homes are. So if you have um, devices like uh, Alexa's or you have Google Homes or any of those smart home devices, um, those are in the internet, right? So they're constantly kind of using the internet to, at, to stay at your beck and call. You might also have your cell phone on your Wi-Fi and your somebody is using a desktop and a laptop computer and somebody is streaming something on the television. So, and this might be a household of two people. I have to say, I have a lot of devices in my house that use Wi-Fi and there's just two of us. And um, we use a lot, we use a lot of internet. So on average, they say for about one to two people, about 50 to 100 megabits per second. And honestly, 50 is about the, the minimum that you're going to find uh, for a base plan um, through any of the, the local internet service providers. Two to four people, you need about 100 to 500. Of course, four plus people, you need 500 or more. But it, again, it depends on what you're doing. If you have four people and all they're going on is uh, to check their email, you don't need anything super fast. It's only if they're starting to stream simultaneously. That's when these speeds really come into play. Okay, so this is, let's see, about the average cost. And this, again, I'm sorry, it changes all the time. Um, and I was just looking at a website, and I might actually pull it up so everybody can see um, kind of the average cost of everything. I think it was that last um, website that I was talking about, that highspeedinternet.com, which was really great. So types and speeds of internet connections that are available to us in this area. We have cable, which we know because um, Comcast or Xfinity uh, Frontier offer the cable option. And with that, you get anywhere from 10 to 200 megabits per second. One thing that I do wanna say before I forget is that that maximum range there, that 200 megabits per second, they can't guarantee that on a daily basis. It's really a range. Usually what they mean is 200 is the max that you, you are capable of getting. It might average in the 75 to maybe 125 range. Uh, it may be higher than 200. Um, so really when they advertise that megabits per second to you, they're really just telling you the max of what's possible. 
even though it can go above that. Um, so just a word to the wise. On average, the average price per month for a plan like that would be about $58 per month. Now remember, you need an internet plan in order to stream. Um, so this is where it kind of comes into play. You have to start crunching numbers. Is it going to be more affordable to not have cable and just have a, a cable internet service? DSL, believe it or not, I guess is still around. Um, you'll notice that the speeds are much, much lower and the price surprisingly is not um, too much lower than the $58 a month. So that's kind of interesting. Fiber optics is somewhat newer. So that ranges from 30 to 100 megabits per second. It can go faster. Um, $56 per month is the average. And then you have satellite and look at the numbers on that. It's kind of crazy. And the price point is way up there. So typically what I recommend to people is just stick with the cable because there's a lot of cable lines around and it's usually very easy to access. And again, um, this presentation, you can click on all of these links when I send it to you. So here are ways to lower your internet bill because you might be looking at those numbers and you're like, well, I don't know if I'm actually going to save any money. First and foremost, you can reduce your internet speeds for instance, if you are paying for a 500 megabits per second uh, internet service plan and you're not even getting close to that because there's like two people in your household and you occasionally go on and you stream some stuff, but mostly you're checking emails and going on social media, you don't need that. You're paying for more than, um, than you actually need. The nice thing is if you are at a low base plan and you notice that, hey, it's going a, li a little slow. I keep getting kicked out of things. You can always upgrade. They're never going to complain about that. They usually, and when I say they, the internet service providers usually are a little bit more hesitant to lower it. They're going to try to see how they can keep you in that current plan. And sometimes there's even a fee. So you got to be careful with that. Another option is that you can buy your own modem and router. They come in um, duos, so they come together as one device, which is really nice, or you can buy them separately. The reason that I mention this is because most internet service providers just throw those into your package, right? So you have this device that, um, that the cable company came and they hooked up for you. And then if you look at your bill, your itemized bill, you'll notice it's about $10 a month to rent that modem and or router. So it gets a little crazy because in 12 months, that's 120 additional dollars. Whereas you can get a pretty decent modem and router combo for about 60. Um, so it pays itself off in six months. So that is another way to save a little bit of money. You can also bundle your TV and internet. Now I know we're talking about cutting the cord and getting away from cable. But maybe you decide, you know what, you have your internet, your TV, and your phone. Maybe you just want internet and phone. You can cut out the TV, see what they can offer you, see what kind of deals are available. Shop around and compare prices. We are very fortunate in the Groton area to have several internet service providers. Where I am in Griswold, I think we have two. So um, it's nice to have these options. You can compare and contrast uh, and see which one is going to be the better deal and which one has better service. You can also negotiate your monthly charges. Um, so you would have to talk to somebody at the, uh, at the cable company. You can ask about discounts and promotions and there are also government subsidies. Um, so again, these are all links that you can click on uh, when I send you the presentation. If there's any questions about choosing internet, please, please, please let me know. Um, put that in the Q&A, you can put it in the chat. All right, I don't see anything, but you could be typing. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into choosing a device. How do you choose a device? So let's see here. All right, there we go. So as I was mentioning before, if you, um, if you already have a smart TV, you are all set. You have your, your television, which is what you would view on. Plus, because it's smart, that means it can operate using apps. You'll notice on this remote here, 
that there is a button for Netflix, a button for Sling, a button for Hulu, a button for CW. These are all apps that would already be on the smart TV. And you, if you have a smart TV, your remote might also have those buttons. Otherwise, what happens is your smart TV just brings you to a screen, it has all of your apps, and then you choose which one you wanna watch. Um, it really kind of gets rid of the whole idea of channel surfing. So it's very different. So if you do not have a smart TV, you would have to purchase a device, a one-time purchase, purchase a device that would make your television smart. So it would give you access to these applications on your television. This is the Roku, and I'm going to cover the Roku, the Fire Stick, and the Chromecast just because those are the three popular ones. I'm sure there are several others out there. I just know that I personally have worked with at least two of them. I have not used a Roku, but I do know people that have and think it's great. Now, the way that this works is you'll notice that you have, you have this Roku device and that plugs into the HDMI port on your television. Then you have your remote and that controls what's on your screen. You'll notice that the price ranges from $29.99 to $99.99. And that's really just because there are different versions of the Roku, some that are HD, some that are 4K, some that are ultra 4K. So it really depends on your television because you don't wanna purchase a Roku that's ultra 4K and you don't have a 4K television, right? Because again, that's an example of paying for something that um, you can't even use properly. So this is a link. It tells you step-by-step step what to do, how to use it. It also tells you what apps may be available. And also it has updated prices if they have um, added any other versions of the Roku. Amazon Fire Stick is another one. Uh, Amazon's been around for a while. I had a Fire Stick for a little bit. Um, it works the exact same way as a Roku. This device here plugs into the HDMI port. You go to the HDMI channel on your television and then you can see all of the apps on your TV. So it's really, really nice. Um, the price is about $25 if you're a Prime member and it goes up uh, significantly <laughs> to about $40 if you are not. There are several different versions of this as well. So if you wanted like an HD or ultra 4K, um, they have various versions. Some are even, this is an old picture, but some, I believe they're all compatible with the Alexa devices too. So lots and lots of options, um, but you can find all of those on amazon.com. Google Chromecast is Google's version of a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick. Again, it plugs into the HDMI port. Um, they do come with remotes now. This one did not because this was a first generation picture. And what used to happen, and actually it still works this way, is you can use your smart device to cast from your device onto the television. So for instance, if you're watching a YouTube video or even maybe you're looking at Facebook on your phone, you can hit the cast button and it will cast to the Chromecast on your television. So that way you can mirror whatever's on your phone onto the TV. Like I mentioned earlier, this does come with a remote now and it operates pretty much identical, identically to the Fire Stick and the Roku. So lots of improvements have been made and they're all very affordable, which is nice. And again, these are one-time purchases. Other devices, um, would be a smart TV. Again, if you already have a smart TV, you don't need to buy anything extra. A smart Blu-ray player, um, if you're still into watching discs, I found out about these. I bought my parents a Blu-ray player. They hooked it up into their TV and all of a sudden all these apps popped up on their television. I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, and then of course, uh, the only reason I bring this up is because a lot of the people that have attended my classes in the past have mentioned this, that indoor or outdoor antennas are really great, depending on your area, at picking up some of the local channels. And if all of your, if all you're looking for as far as live TV goes is just the local channels, that might suit your needs. So you could cut out your cable entirely, use an indoor or outdoor antenna for your local channels, and then maybe get Hulu or Netflix for the other stuff. Okay, so this is the fun part. Are there any questions as far as selecting an internet service plan, any of the devices? Remember, you can just plug in your questions by tapping on the Q&A box, um, which should probably be at the bottom of your screen. Um, if not, I'll go ahead and jump into the streaming services because this is where it gets more exciting. 
Okay, the first one is Netflix. Netflix has been around for a long time. It's a subscription service and it has a monthly fee ranging from $8.99 to $15.99. With this price, you can stream on multiple devices. There are no commercials and they have Netflix original content, which means it can't be found anywhere else, such as on cable television. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to jump on over to Netflix. I'm going to try to anyways. Let's see if I can do this. Ta -da. All right, and I'm going to go here and okay. So here is Netflix. Now, the way that it appears is to sign up. You can go ahead and enter in your email address um, and they'll get you started with the membership. You can enjoy this on pretty much any device that connects to the internet. You can see here it says smart TVs, PlayStation, Xbox, Chromecast, Apple TV, Blu-ray players, and more. More would include the Fire Stick and the Roku. Um, also, it's a website. You can watch this straight from Netflix.com on your laptop or desktop computer. You can download the app onto your device as well. And also they've added in this feature where you can even download movies and episodes of television shows. So if you're going on a trip, say on an airplane um, or just on a trip in general and you don't have access to the internet, you can download content, which is really nice. Um, you can watch on any device. Um, you can create separate profiles for the people in your family. Um, this is great. I have to say when I first started with Netflix, it, everything was under my account and I had my fiance and my brother watching content through my account and I would get the strangest recommendations straight because they like superhero movies and, and sci-fi and action adventure. I'm not opposed to that stuff, but it was very different from say Downton Abbey and Call the Midwife. So at the bottom of the website, they have some frequently asked questions and I'm going to just go ahead and open up how much does Netflix cost? Um, because they used to break this down into um, a table that we could see and they really broke it down on what you get. Let's see, don't want that. Let's see, what can I watch? All right, so how much does it cost? It ranges from $8.99 to $17.99. Um, and the nice thing is it's not a contract. If you decide that you want to give it up after a month, you can cancel and you won't be charged. Sorry, I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll to the top just to see, they might want me to put in my email to give me more details, which is crazy. But anyways, so depending on the plan that you choose, remember there are no ads, so there's no commercials. Um, they also might limit depending on your plan um, the number of streams that you can have at the same time. So simultaneous, simultaneous streams is what we're looking for. And what that means is that you can have one person watching somewhere and another person watching somewhere, but if a third person tries to sign on, they're not gonna be able to get in. Um, this has really come into play over the years as we share these services. Um, for instance, I share my Netflix account with my brother, but he shares his CBS All Access account with me. Um, so you can kind of trade uh, services off, which is kind of nice. Um, the only problem is you do have to share your login information, um, but having the different profiles makes it easier so that way it doesn't mess with your suggestions when they suggest content for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in here because I do have an account and I did just test it out. So hopefully I remember this password. And let's try this, just so you can see what it looks like. So here's what we have um, as far as the accounts go. You can manage your profiles, you can add profiles, you can remove them. Uh, this is my little niece here. Um, so there's a profile here and it just has children's content. Now, if I click on my profile, it will have a listing of all the stuff that I want to watch. It also has things, um, it suggests that I watch again, continue watching, trending now. They have Netflix originals. That would be that uh, original content that we had talked about earlier. Um, I haven't been on Netflix in a while. Look at this. Um, so there is a lot. And um, you'll notice that they're constantly adding content, constantly. Um, if you're looking for something more specific, you can always use the search feature. 
You can break it down by TV shows. Thinking about it, TV shows, movies, new and popular, or you can even just look at your list if you wanted to. Um, believe it or not, they still have the DVD options. That's how Netflix originally started off. It was a subscription-based rental service through the mail. And oh, look at, they break this one down. Um, you have your standard discs or your more premier, so with various price points. Um, so if you were still interested in the DVDs, uh, absolutely an option. Now, normally, if we were in a real class, I would go ahead and demonstrate how these work. Um, but really, all you need to know is that when you hover over an item, and it's a little bit different when you're on your TV, I'm on my laptop right now, um, is that you have the play option, you have the remove from my list, so this is already on my list, but it would be a plus sign if I wanted to add it. And then you can say like or dislike, and based on those ratings, it will suggest more like that or, or not if you dislike it. So lots and lots of options. They're always trying to curate lists for you, which is nice. So the nice thing with Netflix is you can have profiles. That's pretty standard now. Um, you can stream directly. You can, um, you can make watch lists. So all of that is going to be standard across the board. Um, so I won't demonstrate how Hulu and YouTube TV works unless somebody asks. Oh, Amazon. I completely forgot about Amazon. So Amazon Prime, a lot of people nowadays are Amazon Prime members. It costs about $119 per year, or you can pay $12.99 a month. Um, they have over 40,000, probably more at this point, movies and shows. And they also offer Amazon Originals, which means it's original content and you can't get it anywhere else. Um, the nice thing about Amazon is you can add premium channels. So on Netflix, that is very much a what you see is what you get. With Amazon, you can actually add in uh, premium channels, I believe like Stars and HBO and um, Showtime if you wanted to for an additional cost. Also, it clearly states that you have up to two streams at one time. So you can only watch Amazon Prime on two stream, uh, I'm sorry, on two devices simultaneously. So Amazon video, you might already have access to this. You can always access it. I mean, no, I said I wasn't going to demonstrate, but I will. Oops, I move my menu bar out of the way. So Amazon oops, Prime Video. There we go. So it's just on amazon.com slash prime video. I always just go to amazon.com and type in prime video in the search box. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's very, very similar to Netflix. Their content's a little bit different. Um, I don't think they have the contracts with those, those bigger um, production studios, but you'll notice that there's a lot of Amazon original content on here. And that's really nice um, that they've invested in that because you can't get that content anywhere else. So it makes them a little bit more premium, I guess you could say. Um, so once again, you can hover over an item as long as you're signed in. I could click the plus sign to add to a watch list. I could play this right now or watch the trailer. Um, I could hide it if I wanted to, if I was like, yeah, not really my thing. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of these services are set up pretty much the same way. Um, so let me go ahead and jump back here. Hulu. Unfortunately, I can't sign into Hulu. I don't remember my password, um, but this is also a monthly subscription service starting at $5.99 per month. I'm going to double check that because I know these prices update all the time. Um, you can stream on multiple devices at the same time. I believe it's up to two. They have a lot of original content. I know I started subscribing because they had The Handmaid's Tale. I watched season one. I couldn't get past it. It's so, so dark, but it was very good. Um, there are commercials on Hulu. Um, however, you can pay extra to have those removed if you wanted to. And within the past few years, they've introduced this live TV option. With Amazon and Netflix, you don't have access to live television. So you don't get the news, you don't get the weather. Um, you don't get access to any of those local channels that, that you normally would be able to view, such as PBS. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and jump to Hulu just to double check that price point. Um, we'll close out a prime. We'll get to YouTube TV in just a little bit. 
Um, so, yep, it looks like still $5.99 per month. You can start with a free trial. I believe it's a month, just like with uh, Netflix. You can try it out for a month free. If you don't like it, you just cancel and you won't be charged for the following month. They do have this option to add on pre premium channels like HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, and Stars for an additional cost. Uh, looks like you can even get Disney Plus, ESPN. So they have a lot. Um, I have to say, we subscribe to a live TV option, YouTube TV, which I will show you. And I haven't opened up YouTube TV in a while because all of my TV shows, because I never watch them live, all of my TV shows I can find on Hulu, which is really nice. This is great too. They break down the plans for you. So if you wanted to just do the base plan, this is everything that you get um, included. If you wanted to add on for an additional $6 per month, no ads, um, this is what you would get included. And then Hulu with live TV, notice the price point jump, right? So it jumps from $11.99 to $64.99 because this is replacing your cable, legitimately replacing your cable. So you might be kind of breaking up with your cable company because if you need an internet plan. Um, however, the price points are about comparable. However, you don't have to rent any equipment from them, um, such as the TV boxes. Um, you have, I believe, let's see here, let's see, let's see, you have, up to 50 hours of cloud DVR storage. So if you're one of those people that likes to record television and go back to it um, to watch it, you have up to 50 hours of cloud storage, which means you don't even have to have a physical device. It's all on Hulu servers, which is nice. Now, the nice thing about this is, yes, it's, it's $64.99 per month, but it also includes a Hulu subscription. So you get both of these for the price of one. So Let's look at, you can have up to six user profiles and you can watch simultaneously on two different screens um, without being kicked off. It looks like, interesting, it looks like you still get the ads, but to be honest, the ads aren't terrible. It's usually like one ad at the beginning and then maybe one ad at the end. They're, they're not horrible. They don't break up your watching. So this is Hulu. Again, they have that live TV option. Um, and then other price points, um, depending on, on your usage and, and what you're interested in. And of course, you can still add in some of those premium channels if you wanted to. So Hulu's come a long, long way. Close out of that, jump back here. YouTube TV. So just like Hulu with the live TV option, um, this is specifically just live television, but through a streaming service. So what that means is you'll still need the internet plan like we talked about, but you won't have pre-recorded content like you would have on Amazon, Hulu, or Netflix. So this stuff can be on demand if you record it. And if you notice here, the price point is about the same as Hulu. I think that's identical. I need to double check it though to make sure it hasn't updated in the last couple of weeks. Um, you do have commercials. That is a guarantee because you're watching live television. It's just like live TV. Notice the number of channels and this continues to increase along with the price. I have to say I started with YouTube TV when it first came out. They were one of the sponsors of the World Series and it was $35 per month. It was a bargain. It was great. And they offered all of this. Maybe they had 60 channels instead of 85, but I have to tell you, I haven't even opened up YouTube TV in like the past two months just because I can get everything I want on Hulu. Um, but if you're a big TV watcher, this is probably your best bet, especially if you're a sports fan. Tons of sports channels. Um, you have unlimited DVR, which is extremely nice. What that means is you can record as much as you want and it's never going to run out. You can also stream up to uh, on three devices. Um, so for instance, I have a subscription to YouTube TV. I share it with my parents and then we also share with friends of ours. So as long as we're, yeah, I think there's three of us or there might be four. So if three of us are signed on, the fourth one won't be able to sign on. But normally that doesn't happen too, too often. 
So let me go ahead and jump to YouTube TV just so you can see what it looks like. And oh, they're having a very special limited time offer of $54.99 per month um, for three months. And then it jumps up to $64.99 thereafter. So yes, it's still the same. Um, again, this is uh, live television. So it's almost like having a cable bill. You'll notice at the top here, it says sign up for YouTube TV and add Showtime for only $4.99 a month for six months. So they do also offer premium add-ons for additional costs. You can see all of the channels in your area. So let me go ahead and put in, oops, put in the zip code for Groton here. And so you get your local channels, you get all of your sports channels, um, news, lifestyle, the list goes on and on. Family, so you get Disney, which is nice. Um, lot, oh, these are the add-on networks. So these, this has actually expanded. It used to be like three or four premium channels. It's a lot more now. So that's really nice that you can add that on too. Um, sports plus add-ons. If you're a big sports fan, you can get all of these additional add-ons. Um, and you can also add on YouTube movies, um, YouTube TV, oh, YouTube originals here. So they have a lot of content, a lot. And I'm going to sign in just so you can see what it looks like. Um, it looks pretty much like a TV guide channel. Oops. I hope I remember my password. Should. Okay. Beautiful. All right, so here we are. Give it a second to load. And like I said, it's going to look very much like a, a TV guide channel um, when I click on live. Let's see. It's going slowly. It's like, don't make me work. There we are. So it lists all the channels that I have access to. And really all I would have to do, much like with the TV Guide channel, is just click on one and it would go ahead and open it up for me. Um, so I can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it will tell me what is currently playing. And I could just simply click on it and start it right up. Now, what's great is that once you start something up, it will then start recording it. So if you need it to rewind, you totally could. Um, I won't do that right now just because I don't think our Wi-Fi can handle it. There's a lot of people in here. Let me go ahead and go back to my home screen here for YouTube. And it's telling me some top picks for me. It shows me some shows that are currently live and airing. Um, I can add something to my lineup. So for instance, like if I wanted to add this to my, oh, those are premium, sorry. If I wanted to start recording friends, I could say add friends to my list or to my library, and it would start recording every single time it airs. So there'll be a lot of episodes. If I click on my library, I can see everything um, that I have recording or something that's new in here. And then I could go ahead and just start watching straight from here. So there's, and like I mentioned earlier, it is unlimited DVR. So you can record as much as you want. Um, I believe it keeps it for 90 days. And what's nice is every time a new episode comes on, let's say, for instance, I mentioned Friends, those are all reruns. So anytime an episode reruns that you already have a recording of, it will just record over the old one with the new one. And um, so that way you'll always have an updated version, which is really nice because I think they stay in your library for about 90 days before expiring. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Are there any questions? No. All right. So we have about 12 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump back to oops, me. Bring this back. Close this. There is one other one that I don't have in the presentation, and that is Sling TV. And I bring this up because somebody had mentioned this today. Um, Sling TV is more of a a la carte option. Um, it has a much smaller price point than some of the live TV options that we looked at, but I know live TV is becoming more and more popular, and there's a lot of options out there. Sling TV has been around for a while, and several people um, that have come into the library 
uh, have used it and they, they've highly recommended it. So I can say with confidence that it works well and people are very, very happy with it. So what they're saying here is that you get about 30 plus channels, which for most of us, that's usually fine. There's 80,000 plus shows TV, uh, and movies on demand. You can record for up to 50 hours at no extra charge. Um, if you wanted to upgrade that to 200 hours, depending on how much you record, you can add that on for an extra $5 per month. And you don't get any rental equipment. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel at any time. Any of these services that we went over today, it's not a contract. You can cancel whenever you'd like. Um, there are two packages. There's Sling Blue at $35 per month. This allows you three streams um, at a time. Again, no contracts, 50 free hours of DVR. And they are saying that it's good for news and entertainment. So if that's really what you're interested in, perfect. This would be your package. And you can see it's a fraction of the cost um, when compared to YouTube TV and Hulu with live television. Sling Orange has one device stream at a time, no contracts, free 50 hours of DVR, but this is good for sports and families. And I believe that they do the one streaming, um, I think just based on the channels that they offer in this package. I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting. If you wanted to explore their channels, you could simply just click on explore all channels that they have to offer. Um, it's a lot of the, uh, the familiar ones. Um, so all of their entertainment channels that are available. And this will, this will differ depending on the package you choose. So you could compare and contrast. Um, I don't know if you can add on any premium channels. Um, I didn't see that here, but it may be an option because more and more, well, I don't like that. More and more um, of these streaming services are offering that. Um, all right. So I will go ahead and close out of this and pull back up this presentation. So again, Sling TV, I don't have on the presentation, but that was just kind of a quick overview. Even if you just write it down in Google Sling TV, you're pretty much good. Um, let me go ahead and pull up my video again, just to make sure I'm still here. Um, hopefully that didn't go too fast for you.